welcome students to a very important aspect of orthopedics which is the acute osteomyelitis and we'll be discussing about that now acute hematogenous osteomyelitis in the introduction the definition is very important it is a separative process of bone caused by pyogenic organism the infection may be limited to a single portion of a bone or may involve a number of regions such as the marrow cavity the cortex the periosteum and even the surrounding soft tissue we have to go to the classification of the osteomyelitis they are divided into according to the duration uh, route of spread and host response in the duration it is subdivided into either it can be acute sub acute or chronic according to the duration the acute being very early and chronic taking a couple of weeks time the route of spread is either by exogenous spread or hematogenous spread the exogenous spread is mainly at the diaphysis of the bone while the hematogenous spread is in the metaphysis while the host response can be either pyogenic or non pyogenic further we will discuss about the exogenous group the exogenous is caused commonly by the open fractures that is, it can also be by surgery that is iatrogenic or it can be continuous spread from infected local tissues around the commonest being the diaphysis that in middle part of the bone the hematogenous is results from bacteremia all the bacteria spread to the blood metaphysis is the commonest site so this can be also uh, mcq question which is the common site where the of the bone affected in hematogenous root the acute hematogenous osteomyelitis is a common and potentially very serious disease very very commonly seen in the children and younger age group before the advent of antibiotics the bacterial osteomyelitis in children carried a mort mortality rate of almost 20 to 50% that was how severe the disease was but with the advent of newer antibiotics and all this percentage has significantly reduced coming to the incidence it ranges from 1 is to 1000 to 1 is to 20000 half of all the cases in the children are under the age of 5 years neonatal osteomyelitis 1 to 2 3 infants per 1000 we come now to the etiology of this disease first we discuss the agent factor which are the most common organisms involved in osteomyelitis i'll be going one by one the most common organism which affects the acute osteomyelitis is staphylococcus aureus you must remember this because this will definitely come as a mcq question other organisms which are also affecting uh, after staph aureus is streptococcus hemolyticus and salmonella the other organisms are pseudomonas and pneumococcus mostly the mode of entry being puncture wound clostridium welchi as well as coliforms can all occur in compound fractures h influenzae is another organism usually seen in 7 months to 4 years of age tryponema pallidum and tubercle bacilli also can affect that is mycobacterium tuberculosis also can cause you should not forget tuberculosis is one of the most commonest disease in our country in the fungal that is usually seen in chronic osteomyelitis it is seen in actinomycosis blastomycosis and cryptococcus now we classify based on the patient's age firstly in the neonate age group the most common organisms are streptococcus gram negative and neisseria gonorrhea the older infants and child you see that there is staph aureus h influenzae children over 5 years age group again it is staph aureus salmonella and pseudomonas while in the young adolescents it is again staphylococcus aureus and neisseria gonorrhea you may see that mostly all common the staphylococcus aureus is there in almost all the age groups coming to the host factor the age in children it is almost 88% while in adults is 12% so majority of the patients are the children in the sex the male to female ratio is 4 is to 1 and it's usually seen in the low socio economic status because of the environment condition next is the environmental factor we'll discuss the general factors one is the anemia debility 
third is the infection poor nutrition poor immune status and septic foca in the body so all of these general factors which come under the environmental factor definitely when there is low anemia the debility if there is infection already present in the body there will be definitely high susceptibility to osteomyelitis if there is poor nutrition and if the patient has got poor immunity itself and if there is some septic focus in the body we got some infection in the ear or nose it can definitely precipitate this infection coming to the local factors it is subdivided again into vascular anatomy cellular anatomy trauma and vasospasm the vasospasm and uh, trauma will be discussing now the vascular anatomy you must remember that in acute osteomyelitis the blood flow gets stagnated at the corner and all the vessels which are there in the metaphyseal region is like a hairpin just like when you are on the road there is a hairpin bend the blood comes and it gets taste has stasis over there so the blood stagnates and there is a nidus for infection which increases in case of trauma way back in 1932 burrows coined the term locus minoris resistante to describe the effect that trauma had in lowering resistance to infection due to disruption in the endosteal and periosteal blood supply so this blood supply is also very very important once it gets af affected definitely the chances of infection increases coming to vasospasm though protective as it arrests the bleeding from traumatized vessels it also causes anoxia and failure of antibiotics and other defense cells from reaching that area we come to the pathogenesis of acute osteomyelitis it is mainly by the hematogenous spread that is the blood spread and the common causes are being tonsillitis that is from the tonsils infection or inflammation suppurative otitis that is ear infection or it can be pyoderma pus which is present in the body organisms can come in the intravascular system by three mechanisms either one it can come by direct extension into the vascular channels that is through the blood second is through the other mechanism is by the lymphatic spread or lymphatic channels and emptying it into the venous system and thirdly it is by the embolic spread from secondary thrombosis within the blood vessels now we come to the common sites of acute osteomyelitis the common sites ranging it can affect any of the bones but most commonly it affects the long bones and that is the femur bone femur is almost 27% of affection followed by tibia and then the other long bones in the upper limb like the humerus which is of 12% hands and feet is around 13% and lesser bones which are affected are the pelvis and fibula and sometimes the radius and ulna but remember the most common one is the long bone that is the femur and followed by the tibia that is the thigh bone this also can come as a mcq question coming to the clinical features first is the symptoms the common ones general are patient definitely has fever he has got sweating chills rigors and he can come in a state of shock secondly locally you can see a local swelling at the affected area definitely there is erythema and redness and lastly there can also be limitation of movement the child doesn't like to do a lot of movements because of the pain coming to the signs in general there will be increased rise in temperature warmth will be there there will be increased pulse rate patient may have anemia that is hemoglobin will be low he looks very weak and dehydrated locally there is tenderness at that point there will be local erythema and redness definitely signs of inflammations are there there is fluctuation if there is some kind of swelling you can see a fluctuation effusion and there will be decreased range of movement coming to the investigations which have to be done firstly is the hemogram in which we see the hemoglobin first it is always but always reduced and decreased rarely it is normal the wbc count that is the white blood cell count is increased and generally the neutrophil count is increased the esr that is erythrocyte sedimentation rate becomes elevated in this condition as well as the crp that is the c reactive protein 
that C reactive protein is synthesized by the liver in response to infection is a better way to follow up the response of infection to the treatment. So in regularly you must do this blood counts to see the progress once the treatment has been started, especially the hemoglobin, WBC count, ESR and CRP. Always we have to do the x-rays for the patient. The plain radiographs generally are negative in these conditions but definitely they show a soft tissue swelling. The skeletal changes may have a periosteal reaction or bony destruction. Generally are not seen on plain films until 10 to 12 days of infection. So there will be slight periosteal reaction which may be picked up in acute osteomyelitis after a couple of days. In the other radiographs generally are negative but the soft tissue swelling you can see over here there is a periosteal reaction which has taken place around the bone which is the area which is affected. There is also skeletal changes such as periosteal reaction, bone destruction are generally not seen unless it is around 10 to 12 days of infection. The other investigation which we do is followed by the radiographs are the bone scan. In the bone scan, it helps in detecting the osteomyelitis within 48 hours after clinical onset of infection. Secondly, is the uptake is related to the osteoblastic that is the bone forming ability and regional blood flow which takes place. The other investigations commonly done after the x-ray are the computer tomography CT scan which helps in determining the extent of medullary involvement. How is the spread in the medulla? The MRI that is magnetic resonance imaging can show early inflammatory changes in the bone marrow as well as the soft tissue. And finally is the blood culture which almost is positive in 50% of the patients. Following that we also come to the bacterial culture in which the aspiration performed through thin metaphyseal bone with an 18 gauge needle under the local infiltration is there. Positive seen in almost 50 to 85 percent of the cases. Next is the ultrasonography or USG for evaluating the possibility of the joint infections. The newer methods or detection are the ELISA and PCR. The enzyme linked immunosorbent assay and PCR is polymerase chain reaction. This definitely helps and for the identification of the causative organism. Come to the differential diagnosis because osteomyelitis can mimic uh, many other diseases or the other diseases can mimic osteomyelitis. So you have to be very very careful that and be sure that you are treating the right disease. It can be rheumatic fever but the rheumatic fever is gradual onset. It is not a sudden acute onset like osteomyelitis. Constitutional symptoms like fever are much less acute in rheumatic fever and classically there is a polyarticular involvement that is multiple joints are involved in rheumatic fever which is not so in acute osteomyelitis. The other uh, differential diagnosis being the Ewing sarcoma. In Ewing sarcoma uh, the difference is that destruction is confined to the diaphysis and it's more diffuse as in you may remember that I discussed that acute osteomyelitis is affecting mainly the metaphyseal region. Constitutional symptoms again are much less intense and biopsy definitely demonstrates the tumor cells which are seen in the Ewing's sarcoma. Acute pyogenic arthritis is the next differential diagnosis but in this condition also there is fluid accumulation in the joint occurs much much earlier unlike acute osteomyelitis. The pain and tenderness is limited to the joint to whichever the area is affected like ac acute pyogenic arthritis of the knee it will be the pain and tenderness only to that there will be significant restriction of joint movement and aspiration reveals purulent that is pus synovial fluid purulent synovial fluid will be present in the acute pyogenic arthritis others a differential just to, should keep in mind is hemophilia cellulitis and ulcipelas coming to the important part of the acute osteomyelitis is the treatment part which has to be carefully done again divide into conservative treatment firstly you must always give adequate bed rest to the ch child or the person affected he or she uh, appropriate antibiotics must be also started analgesia must be given so that the pain gets relieved and protect the affected part with the help of some splint 
some support in the form sometimes if it is a tibia which is affected you can give a, a bony slab to protect and relieve the muscle spasm as well as relieving the pain for the child that is of utmost importance antibiotics should be started according to the sensitivity immediately intravenous drugs are usually given initially immobilization also prevents the spread of infection by reducing the muscle action and the blood flow so that is why we must immobilize the patient as soon as possible we must also elevate the part so the that the swelling reduces you can give warm and moist packs to reduce the swelling which is always present in acute osteomyelitis and lastly you must give blood transfusion and intravenous fluids because these patients usually are dehydrated secondly the hemoglobin is low anemic so you must correct the shock hypovolemia so overall you must treat the patient in this way if in case after this the objectives of surgery if the conservative treatment not working if there is a definitely a infection or pus you must have to drain it so to decompress the abscess cavity is very very important one second is facilitating the antibiotic delivery if the abscess is removed it's clear the cavity is clear the drug which you are giving the antibiotics will reach the source and will cure the disease and lastly you must remove all the non viable and necrotic tissue whatever is the dirty tissue which is not the original tissue which has to be removed is of adequate importance for getting a very favorable outcome there are definitely in complications in acute osteomyelitis you must take very much care and treated aggressively from the beginning so you get very good results in the end for the child there can be septicemia that if you don't take care it can worsen the infection may worsen and spread throughout the body and quite a dangerous condition pyemia the space pus may keep on increasing and lastly if it affects the joint there will be severe septic arthritis and definitely acute can easily go into chronic if it's not treated which is also important topic pathological fractures once the infection is not controlled and treated the bones become weak and easily the patient can have a fracture so you have even more worries later so you must treat it as soon as possible and because of the acute osteomyelitis there will be an affection of joints and the growing ends epiphysis is affected the growth disturbances are quite easily can manifest it. now we come to the end of the session students thank you so much